Today I'm working with a Sony TCK71. It's a three-head dual capstan cassette deck from the mid-70s. And today I'm going to be working with an issue it's having and that it eats tapes. And most likely this is a pinch roller issue. So I'm going to be looking at the pinch rollers and seeing if I can resurface them or if they just need to be replaced. Here's a quick look at the faceplate. This deck was made during a time when Type 3 cassette was being produced and Type 4 was just being released. So this deck has access to biasing for all four tape types, which is quite interesting. And another interesting thing is the Dolby switch. It just says Dolby noise reduction. They didn't think that there was going to be another Dolby like Dolby C or S. Something else interesting, when you take the top cover off, there's this motor right here. And that's actually a direct drive motor. Even though this deck is not direct drive by design, let me show you a little bit more of what I'm talking about. I'm getting a closer look here. This is actually a direct drive motor. Even though the cassette deck design is not direct drive, the motor itself is, which I thought was pretty interesting. You can see that there's two belts right here. So it still is gonna have some of the irregularities of a belt drive cassette deck since it really is by nature. But the implementation of the direct drive motor, I'm sure it provided some increased pitch stability. And getting back to the faceplate, another interesting feature is the toggle switch on the monitor. It's a true relay function. A lot of newer decks have like a button like this for the monitor, and that's like a 4066 switch, which it isn't as good in terms of linearity. The next feature is the stepped volume control knob, the dedicated decibel stepping. So not like a smooth transition to volumes, it's all stepped. And another function, the peak hold. When you have it on automatic, the meters will reflect back and forth and the peak will disappear and make a new peak accordingly. When you have it in manual mode, it'll hold the highest volume peak in the recording, even if you press stop on the deck. So I thought that was pretty interesting. So let's get this deck working so we can showcase some of those features. First thing we'll do is put in a mirror cassette to check the tape path. And it has this window here where you can see clearly through the cassette and we'll be able to figure out what's going on. You can see it's eating the tape at the supply side of the transport. So if we change the pinch rollers, most likely this problem will go away. And that's the supply roller, which has a critical adjustment. And the take up side, which is just held in by a pin. So that one doesn't need any adjusting. Make sure to reference where the spring location is for both the take up and supply roller. And when you take out the rollers, you just gently slide the pin out to avoid damaging the frame of the roller base because that will cause problems with alignment. Same thing for the take up side, that's got a spring position. And just pull that little grommet clip out and there's both of your original rollers. And once you're done installing the pinch rollers, adjust the supply frame with an M300 to make sure that the guide is dead centered and even so that the tape may travel evenly across the heads. The next thing that you want to do is check that vertical bar in this picture. Over time, that vertical bar under that pin becomes loose from the solenoid thud, you know, clunking up and down. I really don't like the way that mechanism is designed in that respect. 
Also, you want to make sure that the ball bearing is underneath that metal plate and it's located right there. So make sure that that vertical bar is snug and not moving. So now we're running 10 kilohertz through the deck and the phase is stable and levels are good. So let's check out the mirror cassette. And as you can see, everything is running smoothly. You can just take a moment to observe. And that's the way it should operate each and every time, evenly across the heads. And while I was in there, I cleaned up the belts and those belts are in great shape. They still have the same elasticity as they did when they were new or very close to it. So now that we're back up and running, I wanted to show you the peak program meter and how it will react in the automatic and manual function. All right. And notice that the line out we were talking about earlier, it's stepped. So it's not a gradual increase or decrease. But let's press stop. Notice that zero is still illuminated because that is the maximum that we've had on the program. So let's put in something a bit more quiet. Still, that's your maximum, so it's not going to go down. It's going to stay at zero. If you put it in automatic, that goes away. And then while it's in automatic mode, it does not keep record of the highest volume. Hi, this is Hoyt Smith. Afternoons on KKSF 103.7 FM. We sent you this tape because we think the best way to introduce you to our station is to simply let you listen to our music. I'll play you portions of some of the songs we feature so you can get a feel for our sound, which we think you'll agree is really different from other radio stations. Every few songs, I'll let you know what you heard, and then we'll get back to the music. When this side of the tape is finished, flip it over to side two for more samples of the music you'll hear when you tune to KKSF 103.7 FM. And here's the K71 all back together, ready to play tapes again. One last thing we'll look at is the heads. And those heads are actually discrete. It's not a sandwich type head meaning that it's not welded down the middle. So these heads can be adjusted individually, the record and playback head.